Houston Astros are flying home, and they had a good road trip, not a great road trip. Justin Verlander looked like a Cy Young Award winner. Jeremy Pena had a coming out party. Petey Mershinsky shoved in his Major League debut today. And although they're averaging two runs a game, you know what? They're not the two and seven Rangers, and but they are a half game out of first place in the early season. But they have the Angels up on Monday. That's why we're wearing orange. It's orange out. Opening day Monday for this podcast, Locked on Astros. Let's go. Hello and welcome to Locked on Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on Twitter at Eric Talk Stros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Brett, where can I find you at? They can find me at H Town Wheelhouse on Twitter and Instagram, and at Stros411 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Always positive, always Stros. All right. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet online where the game starts. I wonder if they knew that the Astros would lose uh, two out of the game, two games out of the series. Uh, if uh, JV would pitch the game that he did, uh, that the Astros would be struggling, score so many runs, and that Ryan Presley would be hitting IL. These are some of the things we'll be covering on this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. And make sure that you make us your first listen every day, whether it's on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed to us. What are you waiting on? It is, what, um, April 18th, 2022. Just go there. Go to YouTube and just find Locked on Astros. Hit the subscribe button. Give us a like while you're there. And go and listen to us on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, on your way to work, on your way home to work, while you're supposed to be working. Just listen to Locked on Astros podcast. Opening day is here. Make us your first listen. And hopefully the Astros get some home cooking and we'll turn this thing around because the Astros, uh, after as good as they did in the first series, uh, first couple of series, uh, it's not looking as good. The bullpen is uh, showing some leaks. Uh, the starting pitching is not as uh, sturdy, except for Justin Verlander, and the offense is not clicking on all c- cylinders. Well, now let's 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 do this let's back up a little bit because because i believe our starting pitching going into today our pitching staff is still ranked third yeah. among among the league um jose arquiti just had a rough outing today the mariners were all over it it's almost like they had hacked the pitch comp system actually they didn't use it they actually used signals and that was an interesting aspect of this series is you saw maldi had the little pitch comp device on his knee i don't know about you but to me it looks like some archaic 1980s common 64 device it looks really unadvanced and i don't i I don't know if that's on purpose um because if if you know anything about the space program and we'll get to the space city stuff later on or maybe next show um did you know eric that your smartphone has more technology in it than the space shuttle had and the reason why that is a little a little factoid here is because if they made the space shuttle too technologically advanced they wouldn't be able to fly it and so that's just a little There you go. A little Space City history there from H-Town Wheelhouse. But this series, Eric, was from a from a watching standpoint, was frustrating. I'm pretty sure from the Astros, it was frustrating because today you had this this brash kid that you said you were worried about. And let me tell you, he had three walks in his first six batters. He was wild. He hit Olympus Diaz in the hand, the same hand that he fractured last year was out for a while when he was mashing the ball. Um, his control was all over the place. And you would have thought that this is a game where the Astros can really take advantage. But Blummer made a good point of the broadcast. He goes, you know, it's really hard to get a hit when the guy can't locate the pitches. He goes, it's different if the guy's striking you out and hitting the zone. You can catch up to those pitches and you can find those balls. But when he's going like two or three, four inches off the plate away, and then he's coming in with the fastball in, there was one at bat with Kyle Tucker he called there was there was a second called strike and a second or third at bat eric the ball was four or five inches off the plate called it a strike 
came in, Brash came in and put this wicked, nasty curveball in the upper upper inside part of the zone and just completely froze Kyle Tucker. And it was a great use of the umpire because the pitcher knew that Kyle Tucker was looking for something more over the middle or out and totally tied up his hands in the middle. Um, but, you know, one of the bright things today, um, Brantley got his first home run. And Brantley's actually from the Washington area. So that was good. Yeah. And Brantley, he went two for four today. He was about the only offense. led Ms. Diaz had the one hit. Then Altuve had the one hit. But he's batting 156 on this season. And his OPS is 500. Granted, I, I know you asked me, is this the time when he's going to break out? And I, I was real. And I said, no, I don't think he's going to break out until – maybe this uh, the homestand. And I think it's going to take some home cooking, maybe opening day magic. And I think this team is a little homesick. They've had what? This is their third series without playing at home yet. And this is and, not your typical uh, start to the season. Yeah, sorry about that. And they have not been home since mid-March. So this is definitely something that, you know, we're all oh, the professionals are supposed to be able to do this. But let me let me go into a little bit about Kyle Tucker and and the shift. OK, um, once the shift goes away from the league. All right. Basically, it's the pitchers will lose the advantage of using the inner third as a means of pitching a contact and the position defense. Tucker then will be able to go find a gap to the pool side. And, you know, he's looking for anything built high right now, outer third to drive. Otherwise, his power swing is extremely high percent off to off to second base. Um, with the shift attempts, what they do, Eric, um, phys- like psychologically, is they make the hitter go away from his strength and make Tucker swing inside out, whereas the hardest balls don't do damage. OK, um, so as we see his high BA BIP, his high expected batting um, average versus his actual batting average, his actual slugging percentage, he's opting to stick to his game plan instead of becoming a slap hitter. Okay. So, what does this all mean? If we remember why he belonged here in his first call up, because he had the highest BA BIP and the highest exit velocity in AAA. He was just unlucky as the stats are supposed to show that 100 mile an hour hits will get down. Right. But in reality, the defense is so sophisticated now that if you know where to pitch him, he's going to hit that ball 85 percent of the time in that spot. So only hitters like Tony Gwynn and guys like that um, come up with a plan to swing differently and know how to attack it. Kyle Tucker is planning to stick with what he knows, which you have to commend him for that because really his expected batting average is actually really high. And um, he's going to come around. I know a lot of people are like, gosh, I wish Kyle Tucker would get off the schneid, but Kyle Tucker's going to, you're going to see he's going to heat up. And a lot of that has to do with the shift, unfortunately. Yeah, and if you're looking at the batting average as a whole, I mean, looking at the OPS first, uh, they're 21st. I think this was before Sunday's game. They're uh, 21st in the league with a 662 OPS. The Reds are the worst with the 550 OPS. And if you're looking at the batting average, uh, they're pretty much down there too at their 22nd with a 214 batting average. If you're looking at how many runs they've scored, I know you mentioned it's about two runs per game, but they're 23rd in terms of runs with 29 runs scored in eight games. And But ironically, they're still up there in home runs with 10 home runs, so they're tied for seventh. But uh, they're dropping a little bit, uh, and it's because of the, the recent struggles, uh, the total bases, they're down uh, to 19th. Uh, they're tied with the Red Sox with uh, 103. And there's just a lot of stuff to kind of be worried about. The on-base percentage is the thing that I would be the most concerned about it looking at. And they're 25th in baseball with the 282 on-base percentage. And so this team is just in a, a big funk. You've got Michael Brantley, who's still hitting well. You have... Um, I mean, he he's the he's batting 273 right now. Then you have Jeremy Pena, who's hitting really good right now. Yeah. And then you have McCormick and Siri. They're both hitting above 300. But above that, without that, you, you don't really have a whole lot. Yeah. 
Yeah, so let me show for those of you watching, um, Jeremy Pena right here, he basically is is hitting 345 on the year, 3, 345, 375, 621, 996 for a slash line. He's going by La Tormenta. Um, he's got the one home run, Eric. He's got three doubles. He's got a triple. And he's got 10 hits and five runs. He's looking really good. Now, someone I do want to talk about today because I think he deserves some credit is Peter Mashinsky. Peter Mashinsky had his major league debut, had one inning, his very first batter he faced. He struck him out. He got out of the inning, and um, he looked he looked really good out there on the mound. So congratulations to him. That's a big deal. His parents literally like found out last minute that he was getting called up. They packed what they could, and they were actually able to be at the game today for his first big inning in the game. So that was neat to see. Who would have bet that he would be making his major league debut? We'll talk about why in a second on the Lockdown Astros podcast, but let's talk about Bet Online. Yeah, Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's basketball playoffs and the start of the Major League Baseball season. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information for live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. I mean, if you watched the NBA playoffs this weekend, they were actually really good. The Brooklyn game was insane. I know that the Mavericks are without um, Djokovic, um, but I'm sorry, good Lord. Um, anyways, these guys, they've got some competition going. So head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. Alrighty, and uh, speaking of betting, you definitely need to go check out the Locked On Now podcast because they, they do a good job of telling you about everything that's going on, and uh, it's definitely something you look at and um, it and you make us your first listen. The Locked On Astros podcast for your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast recaps of MLB games with analysis analysis from your local experts uh talking fans through the season like no other network free and available to um wherever you get your podcast and so uh definitely um i know we were having this issue before the podcast it's not peter parker it's actually parker musinski that's and right so uh it's okay brett uh but uh, oh did i say did i say the wrong okay. name i think you no. did somebody I maybe I, I could have sworn I said Parker Mashinsky. <laughs> uh, it's fine. If you said Peter okay. Parker, whatever. Well, uh, it could be I said, but thanks for, thanks, thanks for outing me there. Um, fine. Our pre-show conversation. But, hey, bright spots from the road trip. Dude, Justin Verlander, let's talk about this. Eight innings pitched, three hits, no earned runs, nine strikeouts. I mean, how dominant was he? Well, yeah, before we go on to that, why don't we talk about while Peter – or Parker, I, see, no, see, <laughs> that's yeah, that's on you, that's on you, homeboy. <laughs> but why was he up in the first place? And uh, that's something that I wanted to address was why is Parker up? And he was well, added yeah, to the forty-man roster after um, our closer Ryan Presley was diagnosed with uh, a, some knee uh, pain or something going on, so he's gonna be out for a while. So what's going on with uh, Presley? Yeah, Presley, um, he basically his knee was his knee was swelling up. And remember we said something didn't look right or something didn't seem right. I'm wondering if he's been having knee issues and trying to maybe work through it. You know, players, if if they get pain, they don't want to, like, just call uncle every time they have a pain because they want to play in their competitors. I mean, you know, he, he got a couple saves under his belt. So it, it wasn't all, you know, um, water under the bridge for him. But his, his, his knee was swollen and he, he clearly – could not go. Um, he was not effective with that knee. So they're hoping that that resting that they didn't mention anything about an injury other than his knee was swollen. And so I, I think that I think the IL was was it like retroactive to like the 14th or something it's a 14th, like that. Yeah. So, you know, so he's on the 10 day IL. So he'll probably be back by the Blue Jay series, I would think yeah. um, he, that that's here, which is the following weekend. Um, and so they so they brought up Mushinsky. Mushinsky did have limited um, time down in um, Sugarland, but he did really really well. He did he didn't give any runs. Um, he I mean, Grammy he's got good stuff. And so through like six innings, I think he had five strikeouts. Um, but he's 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 really good, and that's what the Astros system has. Like a lot of people don't realize how many good pitchers are down there. I mean, guys like Pete Solomon, who we haven't seen yet. 
Um, we've still got an only Paredes. We've still got Josh James. We've still got other guys down there that have the major league experience. So it's only a matter of time before they come up and help the club out. Yeah, I know that um, on today's uh, pregame show, uh, James Click was on with uh, Robert Ford, and he said that, yes, they uh, that Presley did get a physical and his knee was structurally sound. So this was something that happened exactly. possibly uh, during camp or uh, during one game or something that something happened that caused this inflammation. So uh, prior to this extension, uh, this what this after this extension, something happened. So, um, so I don't think this is a long-term issue for him. I think hopefully this is something that's an issue. Uh, but the, who is the closer for the Astros right now? I think that they're probably going to go with the closer by committee right now. That's, that's what, that's what Miller said during an in-game interview during the broadcast. Basically it's, um, it's between, um, Stanek, it's between Hector Neri's, um, Matan and um, Montero. I think that that would be four. Th- that would be four guys that you could put in there. And I think it's probably a situational thing, um, a matchup thing where they are in a lineup. If they're top three, if they're bottom three, if they're middle three, whatever's going on. Um, to answer to the questions on the screen, someone says, what was the issue with Jordan Alvarez? He was in COVID protocol. He didn't have COVID. He had fever for four days, but now they've changed the rules a little bit. If a player feels symptoms, they sit them out until they feel better. They don't necessarily have to have a test or anything. Um, I think they can choose to have a test, but they don't have to. They've really changed the rules a lot this year. But just for safety's sake, they're making sure that they're okay. But if they, if they do have fever four days in a row, you definitely don't need them playing. But he was out there today swinging the bat. Um, someone else that's that's been you know hanging around, we don't know what's going on with him. Lance McCullers was seen on the field throwing in practice. And so we've seen Lance McCullers two or three times this week on the field before games. That's definitely a welcome sight. All right, Neris, uh, going back to the closer thing, uh, Neris has uh, extensive experience in closing situation. He was a closer for the Phillies for the past couple of years. I think he did lose the job last year. But he's been primarily a closer or a big time late late um, inning situation pitcher in the past. So he's done it. I think Stanek's done it for the Astros in the past. So those would be my best guess. I don't think Matan will do it, and I don't think uh, who else did we say Montero? Montero has done it for a limited time with the Mariners, and I think the Astros like his arm. But I don't know if they would go ahead and put him um, in. In, in that situation, I think they like him as a setup type guy situation. So I, if you're going to ask me to put money on it, I would go Neris uh, in this situation just because of his experience or Stanek. No, yeah, true. And, you know, like I said, I really think it's going to be um, something that is going to be more dependent on matchup. But if if the matchup's not a concern, if it's just like who are we going to throw out there, it's probably going to be your most experienced arm. That's what you want. Um, so overall, Eric, the bullpen is is doing well. Yes, um, Mr. Richard mentions that Blanco is also available. Blanco came in today. Um, he got hit um, off of like his very first pitch. I think they hit a double off of him. Um, he didn't really look to have his stuff. And of course, it's only it's Blanco's first game of the season. So, you know, give him some time. No, it's his second time to pitch because he pitched four time to pitch. Yeah, Hold this on. is I, mean, I think this is actually his fifth oh, game, his fifth game to pitch this it's season. Fourth or fifth. How, yeah, how fourth have game. I missed that? Wow. Oh, well, no, okay. he has a seven uh, seventy one ERA. He he got he was a, pitched in Friday's game. He he got lit up a little bit in Friday's game as well. Oh, you're right. Okay, okay. Four games, four point two innings pitched. You know, honestly, <laughs> because I know we use a bullpen a little bit, I must have just missed that. Okay, I, I was um, my bad. Okay, oh, thanks, yeah. thanks yeah, for the remember, correction. I appreciate. He's it. He's got the blonde hair, uh, the, the kind of the blonde hair ish. Yes. So, yeah. But uh, in uh, speaking of uh, Friday's game, before we go on to let's save yeah. uh, Verlander for the third segment. Let's kind of close on a positive note. But there you go. Uh, on Friday's game, that was an epic disaster. Not only did Odorizzi kind of get shelled for, I mean, it was only four runs, but uh, Brian Abreu, he's after hitting 101 miles per hour in that one game, he's kind of been a little bit up and down since. Uh, he gave up two walks in uh, that game. He gave up two runs and. In one and two thirds innings, it seems like they're trying to stretch him out to be a two innings type guy. And then 
I don't, I don't uh, know exactly when those uh, runs got charged to him, but um, maybe uh, D- Dusty Baker needs to consider not trying to stretch him, make him into a one inning type guy. Yeah, Pedro no, Baez. Go ahead. All those runs. So, um, well, Oda Rizzi pitched four in a third innings. Um, he gave up four earned runs in that inning. Abreu came in, gave up two earned runs. Baez came in, gave up three three runs. Blanco came in, gave up two runs. So yeah. uh, a, a majority of the runs came after Odorizzi left. So to Odorizzi's credit, yeah, it was it was four runs that he gave up. Now, the Astros didn't help by giving run support. I mean, they only had five hits in the game. There was only one player that had a multi-hit game. That was Yuli Gurriel, who was two for four. Altuve and Goodrum were over. Um, actually, Goodrum didn't get a bat. Let's see. Um, Bregman was over. Tucker. Pena, Maldonado. So, hey, you want to talk about positive stuff? Maldonado hit a home run <laughs> in this series. So, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's about time he did something. Uh, but <laughs> wow. uh, for your first hit, um, I believe Maldonado, was- he is Eric Heisman at Eric Talk Strohs on Twitter. <laughs> no. Gotcha. Nah, he's a great, he's a great defensive guy. But uh, yeah. So, but Baez is not looking good. I don't know how long he's going to last. Uh, Blanco. After his first a couple appearances, he's not looking great as well. And but I think maybe I don't, I don't know if Baker is using the same guys too often. I don't know what's going on. Maybe these guys are just not ready to pitch every other day because is, it, it's a shortened spring training. I don't know what's going on. But like somebody said, this is a, a big long road trip, um, where guys aren't hitting. For us to be up five to four, that's this true. Is, this is still a positive. Yeah, you know it's funny that you say is he using guys too much coming from the same manager that's resting a twenty four year old rookie phenom with three three hit games and absolutely fire with the bat and sitting there because of a scheduled rest day. Like I, I I'm sorry, Let Eric. Go. I don't. Hey, Let no, go. no, stop. <laughs> No, I'm not going to let it go because I'm not the only person that thinks this. Now, do I have an inside track that the Astros don't have? Absolutely not. Do I have this calendar of planned, pre-planned days off like I do or the understanding of why? I absolutely don't. So maybe I'm coming from a place of ignorance. But it seems odd to me that a 24-year-old shortstop that is on fire in an offense that is averaging two runs a game is sitting to rest. And you put Alemnis Diaz, no offense, his worst defensive position statistically is shortstop. Put Nico Goodrum in there. Nico Goodrum's actually a decent shortstop. And now he didn't do terrible. He actually made it a heck of a diving catch. He shouldn't have thrown the ball to first. He did try, gave a valiant effort. He wasn't terrible at shortstop. But I like I, I just I just don't understand. And I feel like I'm vibing with the fan base. I know there are people who question my judgment. There are people out there that say, well, Brett, do you know more than the team knows? Of course I don't. You know, they think they just know it all. I don't know. I just, hey, I probably, you or anybody else probably forgot more about baseball than I'll ever know. But what I do know is this. I don't recall growing up watching sports and seeing a 24-year-old Craig Biggio sit ninth game of the season because he had to rest especially an on fire Biggio. I just didn't see that. Maybe this is the new school. Maybe this is where I have an issue with the analytics that overanalyzes and overcoaches the game. Maybe I have no clue what I'm talking about, and that's completely fine with me. But with a team that's cold offensively, don't you want your hottest bats in there, especially with Jordan's on the shelf? It am I am I being too like obtuse about it? Um, Brett, I think you need a belt bar. No. I mean, no, answer my question before I do the belt bar. I will. Do, you, do you think just, I'm being no? I will just uh, you need a belt bar first. Well, I've already had a belt bar today, and that's why I'm totally okay with my take. Why? Because belt bar gives me the confidence to know that they are the best tasting protein bar in the business. They're wrapped in 100% real chocolate. 
not fake. This isn't a candy bar. This is good for you. And they also have this thing called a marshmallow puff. It's the only protein infused marshmallow. It's amazing. They've got churro, cinnamony churro. I mean, we're from Texas, right? We love churros. That is the bomb.com right there. Coconut marshmallow, banana cream pie, so many great flavors, low calorie, high protein, replace your candy bar with these. Why are you even consuming candy bars? They're such a waste. No, they don't taste good. You just think they taste good because you haven't had a built bar. Most built bars have 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to the candy bar today, and I won't even go into the stats because they're embarrassing like the two and seven Rangers. Mint brownie, coconut, coconut almond, and white chocolate cookies and cream. Go to built.com and use the promo code LOCK15 for 50% off your order. Use the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off at built.com. All righty. So I, I, to kind of address that, I I don't think that back in the day, I mean, if you ask Cal Ripken Jr. if he ever had a day off, uh, probably not. <laughs> Um, th- this That's is a great point. I mean, a young Cal European junior probably, but when he was in the middle of his, uh, Iron Man streak, I don't know. He, he never sat. No, right. he never sat in his career. The guy played yeah. every game. Okay. But keep in mind that in Dusty Baker's head, this is still extended spring training. This is the guy's. Okay. Okay. You no, know, you said you're going to let me talk. Okay. Go ahead. Sorry. So this is a, this in Dusty Baker's head, this is a extended spring training. So this is him getting off day. Now the Astros are coming back to town. Would you rather him take an off day on the road after a, during a day game after it played, um, I believe it was a night game, right? Or on Saturday or was it a day game too? It was a night game and then it was a day game. Okay. So would you rather him take a day off on a Sunday game? When you have a lead Ms. Diaz or Nico Goodrim who could play shortstop, or would you rather him take a day off at home? I, mean, I would rather him take a day off Thursday when they don't play this week. That's when I would like him to take a day off when he has a day off. He's 24 years old. I'm sorry. I don't understand it. But here's the thing. Dusty doesn't actually make these calls. Um it, the, there's a pre-planned day off calendar, apparently, and the Astros are using statistical and empirical evidence to back it up. Right. It still doesn't take away the frustration of your hottest hitter not being in the game when his counterpart, Carlos Correa, who just got paid all kinds of money, isn't doing jack crap at the plate and is looking terrible in Minnesota. I mean, it is I don't I don't think I don't think Baker needs to be fired. I don't think Baker's a bad manager. These aren't Baker's. This is not me criticizing Dusty Baker. This is me not understanding the system in place of days off. And maybe one day I'll get to talk to someone like Jim Crane. Maybe, I'm sorry, James Click, someone like that, that would be able to explain to me and explain to the fans how they use, like what evidence they use and what they're thinking is. I would love to know. And maybe if I knew, I wouldn't be so charged up about it. But, dude, this is La Tormenta. This is Jeremy Pena, right? All right. My, my name's Brent, and I want to talk to the manager. I want no, to talk, I, dude, I want, stop. I want to talk to from, the owner. I'm not <laughs> from Alabama. Stop it. God dang it. I'm not from Greenville, Alabama. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Good Lord. I swear. <laughs> Why couldn't you have missed the show tonight? Good Lord. Jerk. <laughs> All right, but um, yeah, these these guys, yeah, he's still young, but still, um, you want these guys to stay fresh throughout the season, and even uh, you have that rookie wall that these guys hit at the end of the season, and these guys, um, the minor league season isn't as long as the as the major league season, so you have that rookie wall. Even Alvarez hit that rookie wall uh, during his rookie season. Most rookies hit that wall. And so even a young guy like Pena, he's having a great year. He's going to have some good games. He's going to have some great games like he's had. But he's going to need a day off every once in a while. So, yes, you're not going to like it. It, It's not going to be as often as you're probably going to rest a a Brantley or somebody like that. But, But I mean, think about it. Okay, so how many off days did um, Altuve get this week? Did he already have one or two games off? I did think it, did he only had that one. Uh, I had a um, in the middle of the night. I woke up and okay. I decided to give him a day off. 
So my thing is, why don't you put Diaz at second? He's a prime second. He's it's his best position, and play Pena. Like give Altuve the day off. Altuve did break up the no hitter today. He did get the hit, the one hit from the game that mm-hmm. he contributed. But Altuve maybe deserves a rest day before coming home than Jeremy Pena simply because of his age, right? Uh, you, see, you see what I'm saying? I I understand the rest days. I I get that totally. But to me, it's it's like I don't know. I just let's let's just move on because because I I genuinely don't know. Like like I'm a I'm at a point of ignorance right now, but I just know that optically it looks kind of lame. Like he's 24. Why the hell are you resting him? All righty. Let's move on to something positive. Like Justin Verlander, 87 pitches, eight innings, eight strikeouts, three hits allowed. What the heck is this Justin Verlander from like five or six years ago? Somebody who's back in his prime. This is somebody that just had Tommy John surgery. This is a elite pitcher. And this is, if this is a Justin Verlander, we see, even if it's somebody who pitches seven innings, like he did uh, on Saturday, this is a welcome addition back to the Houston Astros team. And Jim Crane, if you are the one that pushed for this, you are a great person. Thank you very much. <laughs> Maybe you'll change Sam's mind because remember he thinks that uh, Jim Crane is cheap. And um, yeah, but anyways, I digress. the The thing is, Justin Verlander came back with a motive, with a goal that he wanted to make up to the Astros. Him missing number one, number two, he's absolutely hated being on the shelf for two years. This is a guy that pitched sixteen years in the major leagues. And all of a sudden, he's not playing. He could have played in the World Series, but the doctors and him decided it would not be a good move. I'm glad he didn't. Because what if he would have hurt himself and delayed his his comeback, and we wouldn't have seen what we've seen. Even in the first game he pitched, Eric, he should have gotten that win. He should be 2-0 right now. He didn't get the run support. He got the run support, although it was only four runs. It was enough because Justin gave up zero runs. Zero runs and eight strikeouts it was a phenomenal game i love watching the pitch dude the movement on his pitches was phenomenal um he was commanding the strike zone and i love when he strikes people out he just kind of walks walks around the mound and he was using the pitch comm system and it seemed to work very very well yeah and was that goodrum's first hits of the season as well Yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, because remember he had come in. Um, he had had that one game where he almost hit that home run to left field, um, in in L.A. against the Angels, and then when he yeah, so you know, Goodrum had a good game. You know, he came in. I'm like, I'm like, why is he DH? He went. He was like two for two at one point. You know, his first two hits. I and so he did phenomenal. manager. Yeah. <laughs> We got to find another I'm, avenue I'm for gonna, you to go I'm down. Gonna, I'm going to do no. Canva just for you. I'm put your face on there. I'm going to say, I want to talk to your manager. I'm going to do that. Oh, I, I may <laughs> file a defamation lawsuit against you. <laughs> I'm going to oh, totally man. do that. That's, that's great. Um, I'm going to totally do that. Every time just you just know that I have, I have the ability to cut your, your head out of any picture and place it on any torso in the world. I've got Photoshop skills. Maybe it'd be a little competition. Who's got who's got the best? Who's got the best skills? <laughs> God, this, All righty. this is terrible. So, what's anyway, going on? Let's move on to uh, what's going on tomorrow. We got opening day uh, home opener, and this is um, gonna be a big matchup. It's gonna be a seven. Uh, 10 first pitch, I believe, and it's going to be Michael Lorenzen versus Luis Garcia. And is the, I think he's still a two way player, from what I understand. He can still hit, I believe. Or, uh, but he won't be hitting because they have no. Shoei Otani. So, yeah, for, for real. But uh, Otani is against uh, Luis Garcia. He's uh, got two home runs against him and 12 at bats. And also, Jared Walsh has uh, two home runs and 11 bats, and he's batting three, a uh, 636 wow. against him. So um, Shohei Otani is not having the best year so far as a hitter, as a pitcher, but Mm -hmm. he's going to hit up. He's going to start hitting. He's going to start pitching better. Um, I think that Mike Trout had an MRI or something, and he was was hurt a little bit. So 
Well, he I was fine. Um, yeah. Things I think I think came back negative. He'll be fine. He'll be here yeah. for the series. Um, Otani just has been underwhelming. You know, coming off an MVP season, Eric, that's that's a lot of pressure. I mean, he really did what nobody else has ever done. Probably one of the greatest individual seasons that we've ever seen with what he accomplished, the 10 wins, the 40 plus home runs. I mean, nobody, not even Babe Ruth himself did that. Um, Otani will get his time on the mound. Let's hope Wednesday night, he doesn't have it together. Let's hope he doesn't hit this, this weekend. Let's let him wait to start hitting and pitching well when he goes away. I mean, he hit two home runs against the Rangers and the Rangers still beat them like seven to two or something that game or 10 to two. And the Rangers have only won like two games all year. So, um, let's hope that Otani's bad luck continues. Yeah, the ask the Angels are actually leading division right now. Um, By six, a half so, game, right? They they've got six wins to four losses. The Astros have five wins to four losses, and the A's somehow are at five hundred at five and five. The Who A's the A's have been scoring runs, I believe. Didn't they beat? I, I believe they beat the Blue Jays on Sunday. Um, you know, here's the thing: the A's have nothing to lose. They've got zero expectations. The A's have no pressure on them. This is the kind of team early on that if you don't play them well, that they're not just going to lay down because they gave up all their good players. They're going to scrap. They're going to play. Um, they've they've got a new manager. He probably brings a new mindset. You know, Bob Melvin's gone, and with the with the new manager, I believe it's Mark Kotze, um, former player. Um, he he probably brings a whole different um, persona to the team. They still got their veterans like Tony Kemp. They got Sean Murphy. So. They're not totally inept. They just they lost a lot of their key players. And what are major league players going to do? They're going to scrap. They're not going to tank. They're going to fight. And so every game is going to count for something for them. And the Astros need to play more like that offensively when they come home. All right. So let's forget all the negativity. Let's forget all that crap. It's opening day. Let's get excited, Houston. They're coming home. They're going to play That's in right. your backyard. So we get to go out there, support them, and let's forget what happened last time they played at Minute Maid Park. Forget, wipe all that from your memory. Wait, the last time they played at Minute Maid Park, I was at Game Two of the World Series and they killed. What are you talking about? That's what I remember. Okay. Oh, you're talking about your game. My bad. Shut up. <laughs> I still have nightmares of that. <laughs> Oh, uh, so just uh, just make sure that you get there early, get there and uh, wear orange out. That's support right. The Astros and let's get there and support them because Altuve needs to wake up. The offense as whole wakes up and we still outside of game one and maybe I don't think even game two outside of game one. We have not had the full lineup in the game at the same yeah. time. No, that, that's true. And so, you know, we're looking to have that um, come Monday. Now, they're also giving away a Yoran Alvarez um, ALCS MVP bobblehead. They're giving away uh, the schedule magnets they give away for every opening game. Um, they're also, I don't know if they're going to do the ring ceremony on Monday or Tuesday. They're going to be giving away rings. There's there's like a whole ring package you can get with different players, Altuve, Bregman, um, Alvarez, the, you know, it's got Yuli, I think is one. Yuli, and and so that's so that's a really cool thing. So if if you're going to get there, get there early. There's there's all kinds of festivities. They'll have the street festival. There's a big thing going over um, at um, at Cobo's Q. I, I think there's some other restaurants in the area. Just just go to downtown. Just get there early. Have fun. I think Lucky's Pub has got something set up across from Minute Maid Park. I'm going to be there. Eric's going to be there. Um, I'm I'm going to be meeting. Uh, I'm going to be doing a little meet up um and I, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to be there with me fifth inning st arnold's just to see who's there if if you've never met us in person you want to meet us tomorrow at the game fifth inning st arnold's left field um eric and i will be there and just say hi let's get some pictures let's 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 talk baseball and hopefully we're talking the astros are up seven to two on the angels in the fifth inning and we can have fun kind of watching watching from out there in left field yeah, I'll bring my special friend too, um, so uh, that'll be fun. But it, I'm excited about this uh, opening day. It's it's here, and the Astros are still above 500. Now all we can do is go up from here, and the Angels are right above us. So what can we do? We just knock them out and take over first place again. But it's still early in the season. I'm not worried about who's in first no. place right now. It's not. It doesn't matter. 
So here's your always positive, always strokes ending for me. These bats will heat up. We will not stay hitting two game, two two runs a game. That's not a sustainable pace. I mean, if they were averaging 10 runs a game, I would say that's not sustainable. But the Astros, I believe, have in them between five to seven runs average per game easily. Kyle Tucker's going to start getting hot. Alex Bregman has been hitting the ball really well. Kyle Tuve is going to get off the schneid. Jeremy Payne is going to lead them offensively. Um, Jason Castro, Martin Maldonado, they're going to be your defensive catchers. You're not going to get much from them offensively. Jordan Alvarez is going to come back healthy, and they're going to be swinging the bat. And we got Justin Verlander. So, you know, the bottom line is this. I bet you Framber comes back this this week, throws well. I believe that, you know, Luis Garcia is going to throw well. And I can't wait to see Justin Verlander throw against the Blue Jays. That's that's going to be fun because one of the last times he pitched against the Blue Jays, he threw a no-hitter. So, Yeah. All righty. So that's all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. Make sure you check out the Lockdown MLB podcast with Sully. Uh, he always uh, talks about all the different uh, teams out there, and he does a great job over there. So make him your third listen and go uh, check us out on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe to us and listen to us on your way to work, on your way at, uh, to the game tomorrow. I mean, even if you're Definitely. waiting in line, because the lines are going to be a little bit long because you can only go into certain places. So make sure you turn, uh, listen to us, bring your AirPods and listen to us. So uh, that's all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Nationals podcast. Uh, for uh, Brett, my name's Eric and Ghostros. Let's get some W's and we'll see you tomorrow.